Hello, hello, assalamualaikum and hi everyone. And let's continue with another subtopic in this chapter. Okay, in in order for you to continue this video, please watch the first video first. Okay, the first video is 6.1 overview of photosynthesis. If you haven't watched that one, please watch that one first in order for you to make sense of this video. Okay, so overview of photosynthesis. Please watch this one first if you haven't. Or else you will feel like... What am I talking about? Okay, so 6.2 is about spectrum of photosynthetic pigments. Spectrum. That means we have a range here. So range from the left. Okay, another extreme to another extreme. So this is what we call a spectrum. We will... Look at it, okay, later. What am I talking about when I'm talking about photosynthetic pigment? And also, you guys have to know what are the photosynthetic pigments involved in photosynthesis. So, let's take a look at the next slide. Photosynthetic pigment. I told you before, which part capture the light? Is it chloroplast? No, please say chlorophyll. Because chlorophyll is the pigment. Okay, the pigment. So the role of the photosynthetic pigment is to absorb light energy. And then we have two types of pigments actually. So the popular one. Okay, why is it popular chlorophyll? Because whenever you see leaves out there, you will most likely seeing green leaves. That's why it's so popular. Okay, but you have to know under chlorophyll, we have chlorophyll A and B. And also we have another type which are called carotenoid. In case it looks familiar to you, yeah, it does. It is carrot. Okay, carrot is orange, so that's why it's called carotenoids. And under carotenoids, you have another three example of pigments: xanthophyll, carotin, phytophytin. Remember, all of these pigments located in the thylakoid membrane. That is why this is where light dependent reaction occur. Light dependent reaction occur. Okay, so please find telecord membrane for me. Pause this video if you need it. So which one is telecord membrane? So you have to find telecord. Okay, I'm gonna choose this. So the outer part is telecord membrane. So label it telecord membrane so that you know. Don't put this one. That one is not telecord. That is chloroplast. Okay, so you have to know how to differentiate between thylakoid membrane. Oops, my bad. Thylakoid membrane and also the membrane of chloroplast. It's different thing. Chloroplast is the whole thing, but we want to look deep down inside. So this one, the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so let's take a look at the next so extra info. So what is light? Ah, so for this one, it's a little bit about physics. I don't like physics, but let's read this together okay so what is light so light is a form of energy called electromagnetic energy or we call it as electromagnetic radiation so this is actually light anything that has like electromagnetic so when we're talking about light electromagnetic radiation we actually have spectrum i will show you after this what is the spectrum but one of the spectrum that we can see is uh by human eyes is visible light so usually the visible spectrum is between this wavelength so we call nanometer this is nanometer as wavelength all right so light consists discrete particles known as photon so photon is the energetic particle that you will learn more in this chapter so energetic particle okay when we excite it it's photon why photon photo so photon light energy and you have to remember the shorter the wavelength the greater the energy of each photon so the shorter the wavelength okay the greater the energy of each photon so we'll look at it at the next slide this is what I say when I say about electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, we have a lot of spectrum. But 
this is the spectrum where our eyes as human can perceive it we can we can look at this that's why it's called visible light okay remember this is what you learn in physics right you have to remember the order gamma ray x-ray uv invisible light infrared microwave radio wave out of all this spectrum okay this part which is visible light okay we will uh, zoom in and then you will find this color that is why we will you will find red orange yellow green blue violet and indigo okay so remember 380 nanometer to 750 nanometer okay so that is why each photosynthetic pigment can absorb and reflect some of the visible light okay they absorb this light and then they reflect it and please okay for this light i just want to tell you okay even though they absorb blue and red light doesn't mean that we can see blue and red light it will produce different color okay remember the color that they absorb the color that they absorb is not the same as the color as they reflect so for example for chlorophyll chlorophyll a they usually absorb blue and red light for both chlorophyll but what we can see chlorophyll a we can see the bluish green kind of leaf but for chlorophyll b you will most likely see yellowish green the leaf that is about to die okay so remember chlorophyll usually absorb blue and red rb blue and red but carotenoid mostly absorb purple light so as you can see here blue and red okay find me blue and red so this is blue part this is red part so this is the part where chlorophyll absorb but how about carotenoid they say purple so this is carotenoid carotenoid okay wait a minute my bad my bad the spelling is wrong so just remember carrot carrot and then add the noid okay so carrot the noid mostly absorb purple light but what do they reflect they reflect yellow yellow orange gray pigment okay so for xanthophyll yellow pigment carotene like carrot orange pigment phyophytin gray pigment that is why when you do the experiment later on in lab for uh for this photosynthesis experiment okay you will be using chromatography paper you won't be able to see phyophytin that much because it's gray okay so please remember this pigment absorb light at specific wavelength for absorption spectrum because why look at this the color has specific wavelength so this is what we call as wavelength okay 380 nanometer to 750 nanometer so for example for red it's 650 to 750 nanometer outside of this range it will go to orange okay is that clear about the spectrum you have to remember the pigment absorb at a very specific wavelength outside of the range they won't accept it okay they won't they won't absorb it okay let's take a look at the absorption of spectrum so when you plot a graph okay plot a graph y and x exist amount of light absorbed this is y and the x exists which is the wavelength okay, as you can see from indigo to red chlorophyll a mostly absorb at blue to purple so this one blue to purple okay the highest red here and then look at this the second pick is over here on the right look at the one on the right this one is orange so chlorophyll a mostly absorb around purple blue and orange spectrum how about chlorophyll b mostly at blue okay try how about carotenoid look at carotenoid it's blue and blue 
It's not green yet, right? Look at this. It's blue. So you, we can say for carotenoid, it actually absorb around blue color as well. But is it as much as chlorophyll? No. That's why amount of light absorbed for carotenoid is lower peak than chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is up here. But for carotenoid, it's quite down here. Okay? So enough about the pigment. We're going to learn about structure of chlorophyll. We keep talking about chlorophyll, right? Chlorophyll is one of the pigment. So... Chlorophyll is actually the main photosynthetic pigment. That's why it's so popular. Do you learn about carotenoid before? You might not have like heard about it before. But now, you know. Yeah, because you're in metric lah kan? So, main photosynthetic pigment, you have to remember for chlorophyll, they have this ring. What is it called? Porphyrin ring. Porphyrin ring. So, this is the part where it actually absorbs light. The porphyrin ring ring okay and they have two side one side is a complex ring this is the complex ring okay you can see it's like a ring right okay it's cyclic and also the other one is the very complex ring and very long 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 side chain so this is the ring and this one is the side chain you have to remember in the ring okay Right in the middle here, we have magnesium. Okay, for chlorophyll, it's Mg, magnesium. Please don't forget about it. It contains a magnesium atom. Right, in case they give you the, this picture and then they, they blur it and they say, what is X? And then you'll be like, oh, maybe ferrum. No, it's magnesium, Mg. Okay, can you do that? Okay, so why leaves are green? Why do you think leaves are green? Because, because, mostly the chlorophyll absorb what color just now? Do you remember? RB kan? RB, red and blue. So when chlorophyll absorbs red and blue spectrum, they will reflect green. Yeah, they won't, I told you just now, they won't reflect, they won't reflect the color that they absorb. It doesn't work that way for physics. Ask your physics teacher why. Don't ask me. Okay. Actually, you can ask me. But yeah, do consultation with me lah. Alright. So, in this case, red and blue, when they absorb red and blue, they will reflect green. So, that is why leaves are green. Okay. But sometimes, the leaves get, you know, they can seem like orange color. Orange, yellow when they're about to die. Or in four season country. Why? Because the chlorophyll died. Okay, so the chlorophyll died. When the chlorophyll died, mostly the carotenoid part absorbs most of the light. So that is why when the carotenoid part absorbs most of the light, they will reflect different color. So, what is the example? Yellow, orange, grey. So, that is why when chlorophyll dies, okay, it dies, you will mostly like to see these three color. Okay, is that clear? So, let's take a look on this. Uh, this is what you're going to do in your lab later on. Chromatography technique. So this is the technique to separate photosynthetic pigments by using chromatography paper. You cannot use any other paper. There's a special paper called chromatography paper to separate the photosynthetic pigment. And you will see later on, okay, this is chlorophyll B, this is chlorophyll A, and then you will see xanthophyll, carotin. Can you see phaeophytin? No, this will be phaeophytin, but you cannot see it because it's grey. Right? Hopefully, once you have done that experiment, you will understand more on this. Okay? And that's all for this video. Hopefully, you guys understood on okay, what we have covered so far. Let's try to remember it again. You guys have learned about absorption of spectrum. Okay? About chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, carotenoid. 
Also, you know what is the photosynthetic pigments from this video? Hopefully, you know we have pheophytin, we have chlorophyll A, we have chlorophyll B. What else do we have? We have carotene and also xanthophyll and pheophytin. Okay? As always, if you have any question, do let me know. And that's all for today's video. Okay, please watch this before you enter my class. Alright, okay, bye-bye. Take care. Assalamualaikum.